Welcome back today in our Sunday spotlight Stonington's lobster trap tree. It's a must see this holiday season. Ocean Community Chamber of Commerce President Lisa Kanicki is joining us from Stonington. Lisa, welcome. I see the tree uh, is there behind you. The big tree lighting was last night. So tell us about this. It's become a must see sensation. People have taken an interest in this amazing landmark. It's really a project that represents a lot of love and a lot of talent by some amazing artists from both Connecticut and Rhode Island. We've got 420 hand paint buoys on this tree, and they're just incredible. I know there's a lot of different uh, groups that, that, that are supported in this effort, but just tell me, how did this idea first come about? Uh, this is year two, and last year it seemed like, uh, you know, the, 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 the taillights were heading down I-95. Everybody headed to your part of the state to check it out. How did this come to be? January of 2020, I found myself in Gloucester, Massachusetts with some friends doing some shopping, and I saw a beautiful tree that they had in their downtown. I had never seen a lobster trap tree before in my life. It caught my attention instantly. And I found myself walking around the tree, admiring all the artwork of children from that community. The buoys were very small, but they were darling. And as I looked at the structure, I thought to myself, why don't we have one of these in Stonington? My hometown is the last commercial fishing village in the state of Connecticut. And we deserve to celebrate that with a tree of our own. And so right there on the spot, I said to the people I was with, I'm doing this next year. And they knew it was going to happen. Um, three months later, COVID hit, and therefore we weren't able to execute it in 2020 because we weren't allowed to do events that gathered people together. So I spent that time preparing it for 2021 and was so delighted that we could um, present it last year. Were you surprised by the amount of interest in it? I mean, it was it was named one of the 18 trees you have to see in the world, for God's sakes. Everybody wanted to check out this tree. Did it surprise you? Because I that it had on me when I saw my first tree. Um, I, I knew it would be popular. New people would um, appreciate the incredible quality of the artwork by day but the wow factor at night when this thing is illuminated is, is really it's quite a spectacle what i never anticipated was that it would go viral on social media so quickly and i certainly could have never predicted that our friends across the pond would um recognize us and honor our community by putting us right side by side with the tree in rockefeller center we're the only two trees in the country that were on that list of the 18 most amazing trees in the world so that was an incredible source of pride for Stonington. I know you mentioned that it's the, the last commercial fishing village uh, in, in Connecticut. That's part of what this is about, is paying homage to that. But it's also helping out uh, the members of your Chamber of Commerce, the restaurants, the shops. Uh, you want them to benefit as well, all these people flooding down. Hopefully they, they take a little a look around your community while they're there. Absolutely. Stonington's a beautiful place to visit. We have a quaint um, village here. It's quintessential New England. You can come and see the tree and while you're here you can explore several shops um, on Water Street. We have some excellent restaurants. We have a beautiful lighthouse, some interesting architecture. It's a great community to take a walk in and of course you can come down and poke around at the fishing village too and um, keeping your distance but seeing this incredible operation which is so meaningful to the state's economy. So this tree is serving so many purposes as it showcases the artists and their work, but it simultaneously brings in people from all over to explore our town at the same time. Let's talk about logistics. So if people see this and they say, uh, you know, Lisa, I I've been to Stonington. I know the little tiny streets you have, uh, the parking. It can be tough to find on a busy day when people say are going to brunch. So what's the logistics? If, if someone watching this show says, I got to get out there and check this out, how does it work? Where do you go? What do you do? Okay, the tree lights up every day at 4.30 and it stays lit until 9.30. There is plenty of parking here on site. The town of Stonington has dedicated a large grassy field that's right behind us. It's adjacent to this property for free parking. So it's free admission to the tree and it's free parking. So no matter when you come, you will not have trouble finding a parking space. And people can come. I know it's going to run all the way until January 15th. And there's also uh, some tie-in to, to Starry Night, some, some lights people can see as well, right? 
So uh, we will have uh, a little bit of a layover or um, a, a dual time period where both of our outdoor illuminated projects are happening simultaneously. This goes to the 15th and Starry Lights kicks off on December 9th, also in Stonington in the village of Pocketuck, just about eight miles down the road, um, right at the border of Westerly, Rhode Island. And so that could be a one-stop holiday uh, destination for people who want to check it out. We're showing some of the pictures of that as well uh, that people might want to come down and check out. So what, what is it? Is there one thing as you're now in year two of this effort, maybe a memory or a person you talked to or a comment from last year where you said, gosh, this is even better than I could have hoped. This is, this is what I'm going to think of when I think of this lobster trap tray. Um, the incredible response of the children that come into the tree with their parents and the wonderful memories that were made here last year are something I will take with me for the rest of my life. We had three couples that got engaged in this tree. Um, we had so many family reunions. We had groups of uh, families coming here in their pajamas to take their holiday picture. Uh, it just, it was such a special, peaceful and joyful place for people and um, it, it really, fills your soul with happiness to see the response that it had. And that's what fueled us to want to make it a tradition, grow the tree even bigger and show this community that we're grateful for their response to the tree. And we're here to stay and to make this something even better for many, many years to come. Well, you got 420 buoys uh, painted, a lot of them by local artists, 27 plus feet tall. Uh, certainly an, an impressive uh, display out there, no doubt about it. So you said to your friends when you saw the one up in Massachusetts, I'm going to do this. So now you're the lobster trap tree lady, Lisa. So how do you make it better for next year? Um, a plane's going by, so unfortunately I'm going to have to have you repeat that question. I think you said 27 feet tall. That was last year. It's 35 this year. But if you could just repeat the tail end of that question, now that the plane is getting a little away, <laughs> I, I can. Well, you know what? That's that's how these things go. We're just about all out of time. So you, you dodged the question. Maybe you just didn't like it. Uh, I was asking how you were going to top it for next year. But listen, it's going until January 15th, 4.30, the lights come on, 9, 9.30, they go off. Go down, see Lisa, check out the tree, and uh, maybe maybe someone you know will get engaged there. Maybe you can take a Christmas picture. Go see it, right, Lisa? LobsterTrapTree.com for more information or StarryLights.org for our other outdoor illuminated event. And there's cross promotion on both websites, so you can't go wrong. We hope to see you for both. All right. And while you're there, check out a shop, check out a restaurant, uh, help out all the members of the Ocean Community Chamber of Commerce. Lisa Kanicki, the president of the Ocean Community Chamber. Thanks for being with us and uh, thanks for doing such a great job with the tree. We can't wait to see it uh, in person. If you'd like to learn more about the Stonington Lobster Trap Tree, as you just heard her say, head to lobstertraptree.com and the tie-in with Starry Lights as well. You can head to starrylights.org. There will be lights in Donahue Park in Pawkatuck, Connecticut, and Wilcox Park and along High Street in West Rhode Island. That is CT22 for this week. CBS Sunday Morning's next. We'll meet you back here in Studio A next Sunday morning.